Here we have another model showing the kidney. The most outside part of the kidney is named the renal cortex. And then underneath it, we have the renal medulla. In the renal medulla, we find the renal pyramids, which are these structures that in real life, they look like pyramids. And the renal pyramids, they end in what we call renal papilla, which is this nipple-shaped structure right here. So all this is the renal pyramid, and right here at the edge, we find the renal papilla. Then this portion is called minor calyx. And all these are minor calyx. And when we have two minors together, that forms a major calyx, for example, right here. The first part of the kidney that we can call urine, urine is within the minor calyx. So remember that because we are covering that in lecture. Then the minor calyx, release the urine into the major calyx, and then the urine goes into the renal pelvis. Then the renal pelvis takes the urine out, and then here we have the ureter that takes the urine towards the urinary bladder. This part where we have the entrance and exit of tubes is called the hilum, but we are not naming hilum. Uh, in the lab, it's just for you to have as a reference for lecture. This artery that we see here is the renal artery and the vein is the renal vein. What holds the kidney together in its bean shape is the fibrous capsule that we see on the most outside part. Now, can you look at these little balls? These little balls are named the renal corpuscle. And if we zoom in one of these parts, we can see this. So this part right here is the renal cortex, and this is the renal medulla. Specifically, this would be a renal pyramid. And right here, you would find the renal papilla. So these are the little balls I just showed you in the other model, and these are the renal corpuscle. And within the renal corpuscle, we find the glomerular capillaries. So all this red that you're seeing here is making a reference to the capillaries we find within the renal corpuscle. And these capillaries are named glomerular capillaries. Now, the blood will arrive at the renal corpuscle in the afferent arteriole, arrives at the afferent arteriole. And then blood will go through the glomerular capillaries. Whatever is filtered out of the glomerular capillaries will end up in this space right here. And this space is what we call Bowman's capsule or glomerular capsule. Now think about it. If you're filtered out of the blood, you end up in this space. And then the only way out of this space is if you follow this series of tubules, and you need to follow it all the way out. So this tubule that we are seeing here is proximal to where the blood was filtered. And this is very coiled up. And that's why this tubule that we are seeing here is named proximal, because it's proximal to where the blood was first filtered, proximal convoluted tubule. It's a coiled up tubule that's proximal to where the blood was filtered. Now, after the proximal convoluted tubule, whatever was filtered out of the blood will need to go down in the descending limb, and then it goes up in the ascending limb. And then we have, again, a coiled up tubule but this one is distant from where the blood was filtered. Consequently, this is named distal convoluted tubule. The renal corpuscle, the proximal convoluted tubule, the descending limb, the ascending limb, and the distal convoluted tubule is what makes up a nephron, which is the filtration unit of our kidneys. After the distal convoluted tubule, we don't have an nephron anymore. 
then that's part of the collecting system. And since we have here the distal convoluted tubule, this next segment is also a tubule. And this is named connecting tubule. And then you can see here that you have a connecting tubule here that's coming from this nephron. And then you have another connecting tubule here that is coming from another nephron that's not showing. And you have a connecting tubule here that's coming from this nephron and so on. So you have several connecting tubules connecting to a collecting duct. This is a duct, is much thicker, that collects from all connecting tubules. If you look at this side, you always need to look to where the blood was first filtered. So the blood was filtered here, consequently, this is the proximal convoluted tubule, this is the descending limb, this is the ascending limb, and then we have the distal convoluted tubule, and afterwards you have the connecting tubule. Now, let's zoom in in this part. But before I do that, look at this. Can you notice that the distal convoluted tubule, which is distant from where the blood was first filtered, gets very close to the renal corpuscle right here, also right there. Now look at the zoomed in version. Here is the renal corpuscle. The renal corpuscle is made of the glomerular capsule, also called Bowman's capsule, and the glomerular capillaries, which are these capillaries you're seeing here. Then we see this tubule that's passing very close to the renal corpuscle. And if you look on the side, you can see that they are not really connected. They are very close, but they're not connected. And this tubule right here is the same as this one. Consequently, this is named distal convoluted tubule. Now, Let's look at the zooming version of the renal corpuscle. We have here the afferent arteriole, and the blood arrives to be filtered in the afferent arteriole. And this is the glomerular capillaries. We see here these cells, the nucleus here, another nucleus here. And these cells, they have like several feet and that's why they're named podocytes, because a podiatrist, someone that takes care of your foot. Now, you can see that the fenestrated capillaries, which are the type of capillaries we find in the glomerulus, are covered by the podocytes. And we see that the blood arrives right here in the afferent arteriole, and the blood is dirty, and then it becomes bright red, which means that the blood is clean, and then it leaves, it exits in the efferent arteriole. Whatever was filtered out of the blood will end up in this capsule, in the Bowman's capsule or glomerular capsule. And the only way out for this filtrate, whatever was filtered out of the blood, is going through this tubule. Consequently, this is the proximal convoluted tubule. This is the same thing as this, the proximal convoluted tubule. And then this is the distal convoluted tubule. Now, can you notice that these cells that we have right here, they are columnar, they are more elongated than these cuboidal cells. And these cells are columnar, and they are different than these cells. These cells are referred to as macula densa cells. What happens is that the macula densa cells, they can detect the concentration of ions we have inside of the filtrate that's passing through the distal convoluted tubule. So this is the distal convoluted tubule. The cuboidal cells are making a reference to the distal convoluted tubule. However, these columnar cells are identified as macula densa cells. Now the macula densa cells, they can communicate with these cells that we are seeing right here. And these cells are the ones that are right next to the glomerular capillaries. And that's why these cells were named juxta glomerular cells. They are the cells that are right next to the glomerulus.